know this morning that bees, if they disappeared from the face of the earth, would change our lives dramatically. It's a small thing that you can ignore, but a bee plays a very important part in the ecology and the agriculture of our world. They are things that mostly annoy us, but they really are helping us to survive. I was reading that uh, one-sixth of the plant flowering species are pollinated by bees, and uh, 400 different agricultural types of plants are pollinated by bees. There are other pollinators like butterflies and hummingbirds and moths and bats and ants and beetles, but bees play a very important role. And if bees were to be removed from our plant species and they disappeared from the face of the earth and they are under threat at the moment, we would lose the following foods, broccoli, asparagus, sweet melon, cucumbers, pumpkins, apples, blueberries, watermelons, almonds, cranberries, and cherries. They're very small creatures, but how many of you know they are having a big impact on our world? Have you ever thought about the impact of small things? There's amazing power in small things. And this morning, that's what I want to speak to you about. The amazing power of small things. How many of you know sometimes we overlook the small things because we focused on the big things? Let me give you six things this morning. Two of them we'll spend quite a bit of time on. Others will be short. And let's look at the amazing power of small things. Do you think you'll benefit today? Yes. Number one, this is important to understand. God is the God of small things. When we think of God and we think of the universe, we sometimes overlook the fact that He's the God of the small things. God is actually into small things. When God wanted to deliver the world, he started with Jesus, a seed in Mary's womb. God is into the small. Don't you despise the small. If God thinks the small is significant, don't you write off the small in your life. Oh, I'm nobody. I'll never get a boyfriend. I'll never get a man. I'll never get a job. They always overlook me. I'm always, yeah, I only come from so-and-so. I was brought up there. Stop saying that. God takes the small, and if you allow him He'll put you on the rock. He'll put you in king's palaces. And your life can go from strength to strength. Do you believe that this morning? God is interested in the small. He operates in the small. And we should be encouraged by that. Number two, the second thing is this. Out of the small often comes the great. God often calls great men from small families. The Bible records two incidents of that. Gideon, God called him from a small family, and he said, I'm the smallest. Why are you calling me? But God delivered a nation. God took Saul, King Saul, who felt he was from the smallest family, and God did something amazing with him. Notice here, there's a kingdom principle in Matthew chapter 13. It says, he told them another parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, one millimeter big, that's what it is, eh? Which a man took and he planted in his field, though, I love that, though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet... When it grows, you need to circle the words when it grows because you need to grow. What are you doing to grow your small? It says it is the largest of the garden plants. I love this word, and it becomes a tree. God starts small, but he wants to grow us and he wants us to become something. You need to grow, but don't despise the small because out of the small can come the great. A little seed can do a lot of good and fruitfulness always starts with a seed. Out of the small, God makes the great. Number three, small things make a big impact. Small things make a big impact. Notice here in the book of Ecclesiastes, as dead flies, that's a small thing, eh? give perfume a bad smell, so a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. A little bit of silliness at work can spoil a whole work environment. A little bit of sin in the church can spoil a whole sense of faith and holiness and honor. And this ointment that he talks about, it was meant to heal, it was meant to bless, it was meant to anoint people for service, but instead it was stinky and it was spoiled just by little things like flies. We need to be careful of our actions as well, the little things we do. We've been made beautiful by Jesus, but we can end up by bad actions and bad attitudes, we can spoil our lives. Number four, small things make big things possible. Big things do not become possible unless small things are in their rightful place. 
Notice here, Jesus even needed small things to make big things happen. Read with me from Matthew 15. How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied. And a few small fish. Notice the emphasis on the small. Jesus feeds 4,000 men alone and seven baskets are taken up. Surely Jesus could have done something amazing because he's the son of God. No, he needed something small to work with. And God needs your smalls to make a big impact. Number five, small things are the pathway to promotion. Many people want to become the lizard in king's palaces, but you don't get there quickly. You have to be faithful in the little. And it says here, Jesus speaking in Luke 16, whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with very much. Whoever is dishonest with very little will be dishonest with much. And God often tests us in the small to see if we will be faithful with the large. You're working in a company and you have small responsibility and you don't look after it, don't expect God to give you more. If you're handling money as a teller, don't expect God to make you the manager of the bank if you're taking bits out. What you're faithful in the small, God will give you the big. Number six, God blesses the small. You'll notice that God blesses the small. I read about a man called Leon DeLong and uh, Leon DeLong got restless, he retired but he got restless, he wanted to do something with his life. And so after he retired, he started working in the city and working for various places. And he heard that there was an office block that changed the toilet rolls regularly once a week. And all the smaller pieces that were left over, they just threw it away. So he took his truck and he went and fetched all these toilet rolls. And he did this for 15 years. Took his truck at the end of the week, fetched the toilet rolls, took them to a food bank, and they gave them to poor people. In the time that he did it, in the 15 years, one million toilet rolls were given to underprivileged people. It's amazing what one small thing, done with love and care, the impact that it can have on people's lives. In this church, in this country, we are maybe not big in our own right, but together we can make a massive impact. And God will bless the small if we trust him. 